Engrafted Word Media presents to you by the Spirit of Truth, the teaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God to transform men into mobile tabernacles that God might dwell in and amongst his people. God's word is equally capable of unveiling to the believer the priceless privilege of sharing in the power that raised Jesus from the dead, which is at work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Our specific commission is to make disciples of all nations as we preach this gospel of the kingdom. If you are burdened by God to seek spiritual oversight for your life for effective service unto God, feel free to contact us at our discipleship training sessions, which hold every Sunday by 8 a.m. and Wednesday by 5 p.m. at Refiner's House, 142 Udon Mana Street, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Email address refinersproject at yahoo.com. Telephone numbers 0803 449 9188, 0802 389 4082, and 0813 896 4084. I trust that the Lord would bring a positive and permanent change to your life as you listen to his instructions in this message through his servant. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Um, I, you know, as she, as she was speaking, the, uh, the thing that was coming to my, to my mind was, I just kept feeling, what a glorious plan God made for the whole. What a beautiful arrangement that God has made for every person who will marry, every husband, every wife, every home if the husband does his or her own part uh, if the husband does his own part very well and the woman takes her own part and does it very well what a what a beautiful thing our home will be uh, i'm not sure that i can stand up and say 100 uh, percent our home uh, has reached the peak. We are still growing. But largely, I have enjoyed this ministry that she's talking about. Are you listening to me? I've enjoyed this over the years. Whatever I am today has been propelled and pushed by this ministry that she's talking about. Even though I must say that it was first me when I started talking to the husband. I will let you understand but let me say it this morning because there are some men that are listening now it was first me who painted this picture for her it was first me that said look this is who a wife must be i will do whatever god helps me in my own capacity as a man to help you to feel fulfilled but this is what god expects of you and when she began to see the picture and she began to follow she will also confess that over the years she has felt very fulfilled as a woman why am i saying what i am saying is because there's something that she said which i want to push a bit more the world system that we are living in today is no longer persuading women to be this Am I correct to say like that? The world that, we are, the world that we are living in today has carried their mankind's rebellion against God. One of the things that we have done is to push the women away from their God-given role of a help and push them to start making them to also start competing with the men. Is somebody listening to me? 
This is part of the grand rebellion of mankind against God. Mankind has taken everything God created and rebelled against God and said, we will not have this man to rule over us. We will not live the way God wants us to live. That rebellion in the Garden of Eden has manifested in the home. I hope you are following me. It is the men, and I, I am sorry to confess to the women, that it is the men, more often than not, it is the men that is pushing the women from their role as a wife and as a help for the man. They are the ones pushing our women and saying, don't sit down at home. Don't let any, any, uh, any man make you a slave. Come out. Empower the woman. They use many big bogus words. Empower the women. Women empowerment. I would not have opposed empowerment if it was empowering the woman to, to, to be the woman instead of empowering the woman to come and fight the man and i want to say this we seem we had a a christian ladies retreat in obomosho we just finished and one of the days they asked me to come and preach to them it was a women's meeting she was the one handling it but they said I must come and speak once to them. And I begged them. I was look, they were looking at women in God's plan. What is the global picture of women in God's plan? And I said, the men are not allowing our women to be who God made them to be. They are pushing them to be something different. They are pushing them to be something contrary to the person that God made them to be originally. They are the ones saying, whatever a man can do, a woman can also do. Have you ever heard them say, whatever a woman can do, a man can also do? Is that a popular saying? Are the men ever struggling to become women? You are not answering me. Why are the men not saying the kitchen that you people say that yeah, we can also do it? And they are the ones struggling with the woman. No. They leave your God given roles to you. Then they push you to come and fight and compete with us outside. And they are wicked. What, women, are you listening to me? Why do I say they are wicked? You are not designed to be a man. Your, wake, your makeup, your internal makeup cannot make you function as a man. Let me tell you, a man is a man. A woman is a woman. He that made them at the beginning made them how? Male and female. A male is different from female. Male is not better than female. Female is not better than male. The matter is different. And you were created for specific purposes, specific roles for which you were made. You were created like it. You were created for it. So they push you outside to the domain of men and they make you fail double way number one because you are not wired to think and act and behave and walk like a man when they push you to come and compete with a man you will never beat the man is somebody listening to me Eh? You will never beat that man. You will never compete with men and succeed. Every time 
you go into the men. Let me tell you, since they have been shouting women empowerment, 35% affirmation. Am I talking? Are you hearing me? Have they ever found? You see, the matter is not that men don't want to give women the chance. The matter is that when you push a woman, push a fish outside water and make that fish go and compete with a bird in the air, what have you done? Eh? I'm not hearing you. You have, you have, you have designed her to go and fail. Because she wasn't made for what you are pushing her to do. The second evil men have committed is that because they are now pushing the women away from the home, from the marriage role of a woman, and they are pushing them out into the professional field, into career, their own role which they ought to play is lying fallow and society is suffering for it. Is somebody listening to me? Eh? You know, you can see that I'm using the whole of my strength to say this because I am fighting, I'm fighting a, a common trend, a recent trend. I'm fighting something that has become entrenched in our society. And it's looking like anybody who comes to speak the way I am speaking. It's as if that person doesn't like women. No, they are the ones that hate you. Have you ever discovered that men are very selfish? They are very self-centered. When I say men, I'm talking about the male human being. It is part of their grand design. To make sure that you are... Let me tell you, where they have pushed you to, you are failing. So they will give you a chance. The last political dispensation, the women they gave political office, offices, they are the ones that they are all shouting about. Eh, this yani, this yani, this yani. Eh, this one. Oh, what is the name of the other one in aviation? Eh? eh I forgot her name. Forgotten her name now. Au revoir. Au revoir, Stella. Au revoir. They are the ones that they are shouting. They push you out, and when you fail, they now start making noise about it. Even the one that I was excited about, and all of us were excited about the one in finance. What's her name now? Uh, not Kemi, not Kemi, which Kemi? The one before her. Okonjo I mean, because I was saying if they are going to ever vote for a woman. I will stand up and vote for that woman. After she left office, have they not rubbished her? They started saying all kinds of manners of things about her. Meanwhile, look at society today. All of us are lamenting that our children are not doing well again. All of us are crying that vagabonds are filling our streets. All of us are crying and there is no other reason for it is the failure of the home. It's not the failure of the educational sector. It's not the schools. It's not even Sunday school. The primary builder of a, a child's personality and makeup is the mother at home. Is somebody listening to me? They said a child he said, the Bible said, the rod and reproof bring correction to the child. And a child left to himself will bring who? His mother shame. He will bring shame to his mother. Why? I was asking, I said, Lord, are you not partial? Why do you say mother? He said, no, 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 no. It's not partiality. It's because that's her primary rule. Let's think about it. When a child is born, the husband just drops spam, bam, and he has gone. Who carries that life for the first nine months? 
It's a woman. She incubates him inside. She carries him everywhere he's going. I'm deliberately using him so as to tell them that even the man was incubated by a man, uh, by a woman. Then he gives birth to this baby and he, he transfers from inside the stomach to everywhere around the woman, to her laps, to her hands, to her breasts, to her back. And even when the guy starts walking with tiny, tiny legs, who is there to see the child take their first steps in life? Who is there? The woman. Who teaches him the tiny, 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 tiny things? It is only when the man, the young child, has begun to stand on his leg and he now begins to know the difference between a man and a woman, that's when you transfer him to the man to make him a man and not let him become a woman. But whether it's a man or a woman, the first few years of your being born to the earth, it's a woman that must make you. And sociologists tell us that a child's personality, personality, I'm not talking about knowledge, understanding, skill, a child's personality, makeup, is already settled by age six. If that is true, who does a child spend the first six years of his life? Who does he spend it with? It's the mommy. Mommy, I want to eat biscuit. Mommy, I want to wee wee. Mommy, I want to go to the toilet. Mommy, I want to... Even if he wants to sleep, he must first of all come and announce to mommy. Mommy, I want to sleep. It is the mother that is meant and deliberately God made the woman soft. Compassionate. Do you know that all the fruit of the spirit, all the fruit of the spirit, if you check it very well, when you find a good woman, I'm not even talking about born again. They naturally have those characteristics much more than men. Am I correct? So why did God do it like that? So that the woman will have built the character, the personality of that child. Women are more, they notice things easily. Look at what she's talking about. If not for sometimes, when I hear her teach like this, then I start saying, ah, okay, so even me, I must begin to notice when something is wrong with my wife. Before, waiting concern I be for overload. <laughs> it's when I hear her teach and I say, okay, so I myself, I must be, when I, so when I see her and she say, I say, my dear, waiting day now, waiting, what is it? Tell your husband. I can now talk. I can, I'm doing the same. But she is more naturally disposed to eat than me. Why did God give us the makeup that he gave to us? It is because God is giving to, it, God, God is giving to us an assignment different from that of the man. I am not saying, and I don't want anybody to say, that the man is more intelligent or that he is more necessarily skillful than the woman. It's not a question of better. It's not a competition. It's an issue of different. You are not inferior. You are different. And you are better at your God-given role. When you are pushed to a domain where you are not created for, you struggle. Look at what has happened to us. Yes, we are beginning to have women CEOs. Startups that are begun by women. And they, they seem to be successful. Number one, they are successful, quote and unquote. I will prove to you that they are not successful. But they are successful first at business. First at the expense of their home. Go and see any startup, any young woman that is pushing and is succeeding. Go and look at them. In their 30s, their 40s, you will find it full of two categories of women. 
number one those who didn't marry at all number two those who ha- who married but their husband is away number three those who have quarreled and divorced their husband very few people those whom you see succeeding they will now be people who you will see it is husband and wife doing it together and boy is the woman that is taking the head in this business while the husband is probably a paid employee or something something go and check i stand to be corrected there are very few women who have strong viral beautiful home with beautiful children coming out of that home very few are the ones that are the head in their professional world when you contravene me i will listen to you i'm a i'm a pastor i've traveled up and down now you see but they are now breeding our children we have our children now they are in their 18 they are they are in their 20 they are in teenage years they are all looking ahead it is these women that they are looking at but when they look at these women they didn't look at their hopes and they are beginning to draw our children yes let's educate the woman child let's empower her let's train her but let's train her in the direction of her god-given rules when mankind had not yet rebelled against god to this extent when our women went to school what did they become when they graduate what is the first profession eh teachers why because they are the molders if they are not teachers then they are nurses am i not correct let me ask you how many male nurses have you found How many? Men are not going into those professions because they know that their makeup is not naturally endowed for that. But they are pushing our girls to be civil engineers. To go and be struggling with men on construction sites. How will they solve? How will they succeed? There may be a few tomboys. You know what they call tomboy? You know tomboys. Girls that were raised probably among boys. And girls that were raised contrary to their nature. Maybe like a dinner in the middle of 12 men. And she's wearing trousers. She has learned to... I don't know how to describe it. You know what I'm talking about. A woman naturally. Have you seen her since how she has been preaching? Has she been doing strong, strong like me? We are different. Even though she's talking passionately, you see how the hand is doing like a woman and she's doing like that. Because she's a woman. And she's not inferior. I'm not better because I am doing strong, strong he that made us at the beginning is the one who made us different male and female i'm struggling like this everywhere i'm going when i catch young girls i'm struggling to talk this to them of course it's difficult they say ah daddy uh, what a man can do i say let me tell you at the end of the day you will regret i'm a pastor of many years standing by the grace of god i've sat over churches after starting sitting over churches i've traveled i've seen many churches i sit down in counseling i listen to women i listen to all ages of women when they grow old and the manner of women comes upon them they look back even though they seem to be successful even though they seem to have succeeded in the professional and career and all of that, when they look back and their children are not doing well, they can never be happy. Women, am I correct? What is the joy of a woman if she is not relevant 
to her husband and she's not relevant to her children she's going to have a miserable old age I know the 18 year old girls my girls I hope you are listening to me I know that you are not thinking of where you are going to be old you don't even know how to be old you don't know it you don't know how it feels to be old I wish you can sit down with some of these women and let them tell you the pangs that is happening inside a woman who has lost her husband when I say lost her husband not dead I will talk, I was listening I was reading the interview of one of these accomplished women if I mention her name the younger people may not know her but some of the older people you will you will you will know her incidentally she's from the eastern part of the country very successful and they were interviewing her they've been talking about all her exploits and she was talking 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 you know I read they transcribed the interview so it was very interesting I me I normally read such things so the interviewer the journalist at the tail end just said madam you have really have lived a very full life something something like that I I say just to close can you share with us if you have any regret in life what I began to read I wish every young girl can read she said hmm and you know they transcribed the hmm there I think the editor knew that that hmm is loaded is deep she said hmm if I have are you listening to me what I was reading I said ah, ah am I reading well is it my eye that is troubling me it's paining me now that I didn't keep that uh, article I'm talking about it now I don't have evidence she said hmm if I have a chance aha I think the man said do you have any regrets if you have a chance of living your life again what will you do differently she said if I have a chance of living it all over again I will gladly give up several of these outside achievements so that I can have a home you read it I said what say I will gladly give up all of some of these several of these as I said look at me I will have given more attention to my husband I will have given more time to my children she said I have a daughter now unfortunately she's already taken after my steps i've tried everything i can do to persuade her to take a different step but she's she keeps saying mommy look at you mommy look at you i want to be like you say so she's already following my footsteps and she's going to have a miserable adult life like i am this person describing herself as miserable you will never agree she's miserable but you see, fulfillment, joy, accomplishment in life has very little to do with money. That's very little. I know that if I'm telling you like that, you will say, let me have the money first. When I have the money, I have everything in hand, then we can talk about it. It's all right. But do you know that I am growing up myself? And practically everything they have in life i'm not a millionaire i'm not a billionaire i'm not anything they have house they have car i've used maybe this is the 11th car that i'm using in my life built a house i have children i have everything the things that are making me happy now they are very different from those material things excuse me those that have the billions i thought they should have gone to sit at home 
and not do anything again because they already have money. But there is an insatiable drive in every human being that can only be can, can only be satisfied by discovering God's purpose for your life and fulfilling it. What I'm doing this morning is what gives me the greatest joy. When I finish like this and I sit down, I say, thank God. I'm not living in vain. I'm affecting people because that's what I'm called to do. Are you with me? The day you discover God's purpose for your life, as my wife was talking about, you discover that part of the garden that God built and you discover what you were supposed to be doing to it and you do it. Joy will fill your heart. Women, I hope you are listening to me. Young ladies, I hope you are listening to me. When you grow old, when you have become accomplished and you look back, if your creation as a woman to nourish children, to raise husbands, to help husbands and raise children, if it's not fulfilled, there will always be a big vacuum. No matter what else you try to fill it with, it will not work. I can tell you. I have the benefit as a pastor of relating with young people, very tiny young people. My best friends now are the very young. I'm looking for them from age 10, from age, age 9, 10. I'm playing with them. I'm discussing, I'm relating with them. Teenage life, very close to several of them. Young adult life, I'm helping to settle them and put their feet in their direction in life. I have them in their 30s. Those I helped in their 20s to find, I am seeing them walk the same deliberate, sure steps. They are happy. They may not be millionaires. A few of them are millionaires. Many of them are not millionaires. But they are happy. They are satisfied. They are moving forward. I have them in their 50s. They are becoming accomplished. They are my, the, my age group. Those who followed me in those age, when, when I was learning this thing, they, I encouraged them and they stayed in with me. I can see them comparable with me in their 50s, in their 60s. Are you following what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I see some in their 70s, in their 80s. Who didn't, I didn't go through this with them. And I see them, I see the vacuum. I see them at old age wanting to go and take a PhD. You are not following what I'm saying. I say, what are you looking for? He say, eh. I just felt that let me also have PhD. I know what they are looking for. There is that vacuum. Vacuum. At old age, women, they are struggling to go and do something. At old age, they say, excuse me, why are you doing this? He said, eh, well, let me just also do it. And I say, no, that's not how to live life. Are you following what I'm talking about? I just felt I should add this to what she has said. I know that some people may be sitting there and she was talking. Help your husband. Your husband. Somebody say, ah, ah. What about my own life? Abiu, you? Uh -huh. What about my own life? Me, I no get life. Am I not a human being? You know, when she said we are gossiping among ourselves, what I was simply telling him is that one of the things, I don't know, I can't remember which one. I was telling him, I said, the woman was not made to enter marriage for her own selfish purpose, isn't it? That's what she has been saying. I said, because even the man was not meant to enter marriage for his own selfish purpose. Is that not what the first thing that she said? She first of all labeled to say, look, it is not for your own selfish interest. So, when we say, this is the way I see it. Here am I. I'm the husband. I was endowed, created, done everything to me. And as I want to start up, like God said, Larry, wait. I didn't do all of that to you. For yourself. I created you. I raised you. I trained you. I did everything I did to you. Because 
I have something to accomplish on the earth and that's why I sent you. If I say yes sir, then I am not living for myself. As he was preaching, the scripture that just kept jumping is that scripture that says, I think it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that now that Christ lived and died for us, that none of us should any longer live for ourselves, but for him. Are you following what I'm talking about? So, the correct husband is first and foremost not a selfish husband. A husband who has discovered God's purpose for his own life. And then he say, yes, Lord, what you, what you want to give me to do, I am going to accomplish it. I surrender all. I'm going to leave everything. I'm going to leave the pursuit of money, pursuit of this. I'm not going to pursue any of those things. Those things will pursue me for me to fulfill God's purpose. When he does that, and he now wants to set at the world, God said, one last thing. I have given you a companion like you. To help you fulfill what I have shown you to do. And what God does is that he goes to the woman and says, Do you know why I created you? There's a man somewhere that I've given an assignment. He said, Lord, who is that man? Look at him. This is the person. This is what I have given him to do. That's what I am sending you to do what? To help him to accomplish. So it's a joint project what i am doing today is not just my ministry or my call it's our call the only reason is because because i am the head and i've been given authority to lead the union i take responsibility i'm the one wearing the tag you can see she's not wearing her tag today because her name is where inside this tag in heaven there's one tag. Who is wearing it? The man, the husband. But inside that tag, it is Lanre and Yenka Adeboye. Every time, everybody, everywhere they see me, they are seeing a commission that was given to two of us. Even though she is not seen, she's not visible, she's not as visible. You don't know the wahala I do. To make her preach. If you know the effort I have put in. For you to hear the message that you have had this morning. You will thank me. <laughs> Leave me. Go to Uyo. I will be praying for you. I will be there with you in this place. You know me. I say no. This time. Me, we are going together. And you are going to say, no, I'm not going to preach. I'll be there. You know, I'll be supporting you. I'll be praying for you. I say, yes, I know, I'm convinced about that. I've seen it for 31 years. But it's time for you to start standing up in order for women to see a correct picture. Even after we arrived here, she's still telling me, my dear, I'm not going to preach. I say, you are going to preach. This morning, she has told me, ah, the children in the car will attest it's fine. When I say, you are going to preach first. He said, me, oh, no, I will not preach first. I know the style. She knows that when I start preaching, I will preach long. There will be no time again. So she will not preach. He said, no, you will start first. You are, I said, no, this morning, you are the one going to start. I hope you are following what I'm saying. A correct woman is not the one that is struggling to be seen. He's not the one struggling to compete with the husband outside. She's fulfilled in her God-given role. Are you following what I'm talking about? And it is, this one is not the only time. It's like that every time. Every time. But these days, we are pushing women. Do like this. Go out. Do like that. Does it mean that women should not be educated? Does it mean they should not be this? Are they not intelligent? They are intelligent. Maybe in times past, our, our men, our fathers got it wrong by saying, don't educate the girl. She's going to marry. She won't become anything. That's a wrong understanding. I am a 
serious believer in educating the child, but educates the boy to be a boy, educate the girl. Educate the boy to be a man. Educate the girl to be a woman. The world is suffering today. We have children outside there who doesn't, they don't know the simple things of etiquette. They don't know it. It's not their fault. Absentee mothers. She's holding two, three jobs. She's a teacher in the secondary school. When she finishes, she go and sell plastic in the shop until 5 p.m. Until 7 p.m. And struggle to get home by 8 o'clock. At least in a town like this. Within one hour, you will get home. Thank God. Go and look at them in Lagos. They have gone out by 5 a.m. I'm not telling you stories. They have gone out by 5 a.m. They don't return before 8, 9 in the evening. Some of them even later. Where is the child? The child is left to go from teacher to up. There's a whole industry now springing up. They call it after school. Do you know the meaning of after school? The child has gone to, through school. The child has done lesson. Eh? The home lesson that the mother used to do because the mother is no longer at home now. So when the child finishes after, uh, home lesson by 4 p.m., she now goes into after school. And she, he is going to be there until 7, 8 p.m., until whenever the mother finishes. I saw one. I looked at him. She was complaining. This one, this, this girl... This woman I'm talking about is my daughter. It's one of the people I raised up when we were in the universities. Now she's a big woman. I will not tell you all the details. Big woman. Bank manager. I stayed a few days in their house. Very early in the morning. The child is still strong, is still in dreamland when he will drag the child to the bathroom, pour water on him. The child is still sleeping. They are bathing him, he's still doing like this. Because it's at 4 a.m. By 5, they must be out of the house. She's awake by 3. Me, I have not slept. You know me, your husband has not slept at 3. I'm still praying, I'm still doing whatever I'm doing. I have started yarning her leg everywhere. She has woken up. 3 a.m. By 4, she goes to drag the child. She has cooked water, done this. Everything is freezer and microwave. Hey! She drops this child in school by 6 a.m. With the mega. Because school has not opened. She drops the child with the, you know what they call me guard now? Of course! What is the child going to eat? It is as the child is inside the car, going in the morning. That is struggling to put golden moon or conflicts into the boy's mouth. Every day. The child eats from Mr. Biggs. They have the money. Junk. Meat pie, sausage roll, bringing a puff, this one, this, that one, that. Anything the child wants, he can eat. But not the mother. You can have anything you, can, you want to have, but you can't have mommy. The child goes through all of that. In their own time, there was no after school. So the child will stay in school until... 8 o'clock in the night before the mother will go and pick that child. Then she started complaining to me that this child is always sickly. I said, how will this child not be sickly? Number one, the child is not eating well. Ah, he said he's eating well. I said, what do you mean by eating well? He's eating junk. Even the food that you cook, 
He's eating it after two weeks of cooking. Because he cooks soup for the whole month in one day. He will cook the Ugu, Ewedu, and this one, cook it and put them inside the mortuary. <laughs> if I don't call it that name for you, you will not know what you are doing. Why are we so sickly now? The freezer is one of the reasons. Our parents in those days, how did they eat? Straight from the farm. They just step out of their compound like this. Pepe. And you know, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm looking very young is because I still eat fresh. My wife takes from her pepe farm, uh, uh, tomato, this, this. The reason she has time to do all of that is because she accepted to be a woman. She's educated. She has more degrees than me. She told you she was a lecturer before. If I didn't stop her, she would have been a prof or a VC by now. I stopped her by marrying her. I didn't stop her by saying, no, you cannot go to school. But when she found her ministry, they asked her, what's your ministry? Say, look at him. He said, no, no, we mean your ministry. Say, that's, that's my ministry. He's my husband. Excuse me, I just felt like this thing has been troubling me. You can see it's troubling me. Can you see that it's troubling me? And it's not troubling me because of me. It's not even troubling me because of my because I have girls. No. All my children are boys, but I have plenty of girls, and I'm saying, excuse me, you are going to be intelligent, you are going to be successful, you are going to be proficient, but you are going to be all of this as a woman. So when I sit down and I'm talking to the girls, I say, what do you plan with your future? I see them painting very unreal pictures. I know that's the reason we have, we have many unfulfilled women everywhere now. They are unhappy. They have money, but they are not happy. Some of them don't have money. They think it's because they don't have money. That's why they are not happy. I'm telling you, it's not true. There are more women that have money that are not unhappy than many of you excuse me many of you are happier than those millionaire wives i know i'm a pastor they come and tell me please let me tell my husband it's not car i married it's not dubai i married he's him i can't find him he's not there i'm not happy i'm alone in the house i'm a widow i'm not dead i say aha and the husband is looking at me and say what else are you what? pastor help me talk to this woman She's very, I don't know what is wrong with her. She's very ungrateful. She has about five cars. She has about, she has, she can go to, she can travel abroad anytime she likes. I've given her this, she, I've opened shop for her. I've opened, I said, did she marry shop? But the girl, when they were opening shop, when they were buying cars, what was she doing? Yeah, she was very excited. But when she tasted all those things, and they didn't satisfy her womanness. She started crying out. You don't have to use your life as another experiment for me to be telling stories tomorrow. Anyway, I will not be here. I want you to decide and say, my first primary call is as a woman to be the help of a man to raise and nurture children and to give society correct human beings. Are you following what I'm talking about? So as she's talking all of this today, I don't want you to take it as if, ah, this is one of those women that they have, uh, they have enslaved this one very well. That's why she's talking like that. No. My wife is not less intelligent than any woman anywhere. This is not anything. I tell her many times. I tell her, I said, Kai, if not that my commission and my call is more important. Nigeria is missing the head of DSS in Nigeria. 
I have one inside my house. The, this, she's not less intelligent. She can put evidence together. And, but Nami, the user, it, she was given for me because my call is important, probably more important, at least to her, than the estate of Nigeria. Is somebody listening to me? I'm not asking women to enter a life of illiteracy. You know, there are some women who say, Me, I know Sabi anything. Now, just to be follow my husband. You know, say, Me, I be woman. Is that what I'm talking about? No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about intelligent, resourceful women of capacity. But who knows that that capacity is not meant to compete with their husband? It's meant to pour into their husband so that together they can fulfill God's purpose. Would you like to pray with me? Don't pray for yourself now. I want you to help me beg God to return womanhood to the church at least. Would you like to join me in that prayer? Bear down your heads and pray. And say, Lord, please, this vanishing picture of the woman of the glorious woman, return it to the church. This, this confused picture of the woman, take it away from our own generation. Raise women who will be happy and satisfied to be women. Raise our daughters to go for the best and the best, best education, best training, best skills, all of it to fulfill the divine mandate on their life. Women can go into the public life. Yes, eventually, when they are finished raising their children, they can become they can start stepping in the public when they have become accomplished that time there will be children to show for it there will be husband to show for it then they can actually pour into society back but not at the expense of the home please let me beg god to do it i want to see it before i die i want to see the church returning women to their glorious estate I want to see women everywhere who will stand up and say, look, a woman is different from a man. And we are not necessarily inferior. There's no need to fight with a man. Let the man be the man. We are We are going to be what God has made us. Thank you, Father.